independent bookstore day extravaganza with Craig and Karen supporting local bookstores, audiobooks, and more. Join the world of stories. Libro.fm podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of the Libro FM podcast extravaganza. I'm Karen. And I'm Craig, and we've officially made it. So episode two, <laughs> um, technically three, if you count our lovely intro episode, I guess, right? Oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. True. Second interview. Second interview of the extravaganza. <laughs> um, on episode two, we got to speak with Andrew Sean Greer, who wrote Less and Less is Lost and short stories and all sorts of lovely things. We love Andrew. He was a pleasure to meet in person oh absolutely and we talk about all kinds of things in this episode we talk about burritos we talk about jeopardy you name it we probably talked about it so you we also talk for... about books <laughs> that <laughs> you too. skipped right to lightning round <laughs> you're in for a real treat we hope you enjoy this one and i believe we're gonna play a quick clip of one of andrew's books before we get started yes and as always stick around after the interview for a much smaller amount of banter than normal, I think, but we will be here afterwards to chit chat. Enjoy the clip. Archie. His sister's face is on the screen before him. The advanced technology required for this feat is at odds with his wolf painted background, but totally appropriate for the austere metal and white of her setting. While he seems to be in the 18th century, she could be orbiting Jupiter. How's it going out east, Rebecca? She closes her eyes and sighs. How's it going in the Wild West? I'm in a commune with a naked hot springs. I'm feeling lonely. Rebecca studies him with care. She does not look much like Arthur Less, but when you see them together, there is something unmistakable, like the hand of a master in late and early periods. The hard line of the nose the plump lower lip compensating for the thin upper one, the eerily tiny ears, the ghostly pallor, and the hair so thin it seems more like a low cloud. Until last year, Rebecca was blonde. Now she is completely gray. Les has never asked her if it was previously dyed or went all at once, like a maple in autumn. With her tangle of gray curls, her black leotard top, her concerned expression— she looks like a French ballet instructor. I'm sorry, Archie, his sister says. Did you forget this is what travel is like? I guess I did. Rebecca, it isn't all camels and elephants. I wouldn't rule it out. Archie, I have something serious to talk about. Her expression rearranges itself into a solemn one. Les comes to attention. The ballet instructor is beginning class. Um, we are here at the Texas Book Festival with Andrew Sean Greer, Pulitzer Prize winning author of books Less and more recently, Less is Lost. Um, welcome to the podcast, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh. We are so excited that you are taking the time to sit down with us. We are transparently huge fans. Um, and so for our listeners, we were wondering if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about what you're up to in the bookish world and maybe at the, the Texas Book Festival. <laughs> wow. Um, my name's Andrew Sean Greer, although. If you know me, you call me Andy. Awesome. Ooh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> the the three name thing is it happened a lot in the nineties and I can't shake it anymore. <laughs> so it's kind of a test if people actually know me or not. It's I love it. Andy. Andy and we have failed the test already. Well, now you know now me. We're yes. in the know. And yes. So does your audience. <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a writer who lives in San Francisco and in Italy, and I have written a bunch of books, but I decided to write a comedy about six years ago. And it was less, and it was, I was so delighted to write it, and I was even more delighted nine months later when it won the Pulitzer Prize of all surprising things. Um, people, even last night, were asking me, how did your book win the Pulitzer? <laughs> Honestly, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I wasn't on that committee. Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect answer to that question. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for the introduction, and um, we've got a lot of questions we're going to try to pack into our short time with you. So I will pass it over to, to Craig. Yes. Um, so speaking of less, I loved less when it first came out. I told everyone I knew, I was like, you need to get this book. It is so funny and so lovely. Go buy it immediately. And I remember when it was over, I was like, 
I wonder if there's going to be a second. And then there wasn't for a little while. And then it got announced that there was going to be one. And I was curious, were you always planning to do a sequel or was the like success of the first one? Did that drive like, you know what? I need to dive back into that. Somewhere in the middle. Um, mm. I certainly didn't think of writing a sequel because it just isn't done usually. And, um, but then I wasn't done writing the book and I just kept planning other things. I was, I enjoyed writing less so much that I wasn't, finish. And, and my agent then, because it was nine months after the book came out that I won the Pulitzer, so there was plenty of time to forget about the old book and move on <laughs> to a new one. Um, my, but then when I did win, my agent said, do not write a sequel. You can't write a sequel to a Pulitzer Prize winning book. It's tacky. <laughs> <laughs> They're so going to stick that Pulitzer Prize winning yeah, author sticker on the front of it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it looks like I'm, I'm money <laughs> grabbing or something. And um, so I tried to write another book like that was not that book. And I wrote about a hundred pages of it and the characters were so wooden. Mm, and, and at one point I had a sort of, you know, come to heavenly person <laughs> moment where, where I was like, I already have these characters. Mm. I'm just, I, I'm just making fake one when I already have Arthur Less and I have the HHH Mandarin character. And mm. I, I'm just substituting things I already have. And if you, when I won that prize, I remember Michael Shabon told me, now you can write anything you want. I love that. And I thought, well, this, I'm just going to write what I want. <laughs> it doesn't, th if I have license, I can be tacky. Isn't that what I mean? <laughs> you are allowed to do whatever you so want. So I yeah. really wrote it because I wanted to. And, and then I had to defend myself to my agent and be like, you know, Don Quixote had a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so like, there's plenty of them. Yeah. Um, did any of the like storylines from the like hundred pages you write, did any of that make it into Less is Lost? It did. Uh, the first book was like a cross country trip in a van with an old man and a pug. Nice. But it was because it was supposed to be sort of Don Quixote. -esque, sure. And that sort of vanished um, when I wrote it. But um, so there's a lot of lines and descriptions that are that I just because I'm very lazy. I will keep my favorite parts. <laughs> There's parts of less that I cut that I put into less is lost. Oh, because I'm oh cool. That lazy. Yeah. I choose to use the word brilliant. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so speaking of the Pulitzer Prize, I have, I have questions. Um, you have won one. We have not. What is that like? How does that feel? How does it go down? <laughs> well, I didn't know. I didn't even know when it was. It's April, like 18th, by the way. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> um, uh, I was working outside of Florence at an Italian writer's residency, and I was the director. And my job was to put the the my boss's pug into diapers before it went. <laughs> I tucked it into bed, so that's what I was doing when my boyfriend showed me a text that said, "Local author wins Pulitzer Prize." Oh, oh my San Francisco gosh! Chronicle. That's I, how you found out. Yeah, and I really didn't think it was true because <laughs> it was just a headline in a font. You know, it just yeah. yeah. Someone had texted it to him. But then I looked at my phone and I had a million missed messages. <laughs> I'd missed it by hours. Oh my gosh. Because it apparently happens at noon at like a restaurant in New York City. <laughs> and I they, have no and, idea. And there's a million Pulitzer Prizes because a lot of journalists win it. Mm -hmm. So like the Washington Post and New York Times, they are sitting and you know, every every newspaper is watching that that live feed yeah. but novelists aren't i hope I mean, yeah. how depressing because there's no <laughs> they don't be putting diapers on dogs why I, would yeah. you be watching that because they don't tell you you're you're a finalist or anything there's no wow. horse race about it they just announce it um and so then i started getting calls from former pulitzer prize winners michael shabon was the first person he's the oh, one who wow. told me that i won um <laughs> and then they start giving you advice michael shabon said don't write a sequel <laughs> Uh, no one, no one said that. <laughs> Everyone just said, enjoy the ride. Oh, I yeah. love that. You know, like Jhumpa Lahiri called me and Donna Tart. Oh. And, oh. <laughs> right? So you just, all of these people that maybe you feel aren't real people, suddenly yeah. Yeah. they're, you're in some world where Donna Tart is sending you pictures of her pug and it's <laughs> unearthly feeling. Yeah. And it felt so um, comforting. Like, can you sign my copy of Secret History? I know, right? <laughs> so I'm sure. You know, and then so I and Michael Shabon told me that there was a tradition that had fallen away of the former winner calling the current winner. And he asked if I would continue that. Oh, nice. So I I've, I've actually been calling them every time they win just because it's so fun. I can imagine. Those. So yeah. I called Hernan Diaz. 
Ugh. this year. And I left a message and he left me a message, which was just him screaming. <laughs> so that joy is 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 absolutely true. Yep. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I also must say that I saw a picture of you, I believe, accepting the award in a fabulous red suit. Yeah. Uh, how does one decide what to wear to accept the Pulitzer Prize? Oh, what would you wear? I have no idea. I, like, you know, I need your advice in case this ever happens. <laughs> well, it happens again at lunch in New York. <laughs> so it's weird. It's not a black tie event. So anything could happen. But I was, again, I was in Italy. And there was one of the writers there, Terry Tempest Williams, who's like a a, a saint of a person, like an environmentalist and also like a divinity scholar. And she was giving me advice on what to wear. And she said, you know, in times like these, you need to seize um, a, a, like a fierce statement of joy. Ooh. Get a red suit. <laughs> I love it. And so I, I got one like online at the Real Real and had it delivered I to New York. I love this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's risky. I don't even like buying t-shirts online because I'm afraid they won't fit me well. <laughs> it didn't fit that great. Like I had to buy some like hidden suspenders. But it oh, was really getting the inside scoop I over love here. This. I just was like, this is never gonna happen again. And also what's great is I stand out in the photos. Absolutely. Because mm. yeah. it's a lot of journalists in yeah. normal clothes just and like peacocking, you know. Me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the joke was on me because one of the gifts they gave us at the Pulitzers was an official portrait to go on our Wikipedia site. So when you go to my Wikipedia site, it's me in the red in suit. In the red suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. We we spoke with an author recently who won a national book award. And we were like, where do you keep it? And they were like, oh my God. It's in a drawer right now. I'm not unpacked. So I'm curious, where do, where do you keep your, your Pulitzer? Um, only one person actually gets an award, which is mm. the Public Service Award, which was Ronan Farrow. Okay. Mm. So yep. he got, in fact, I, I brought my mother as my date to the, um, the Pulitzer Prizes, and he brought his mother. Oh. And we met, and I introduced my mom to Mia Farrow. And my mom said, um, Ms. Farrow? I am prouder of your son than I am of my own. Oh, my God. <laughs> you're like, he gets a trophy. <laughs> like, you're not invited next time. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But they give you, when you arrive, they give you a, like a glass paperweight. And mm. they say, this is not a Pulitzer Prize. It is a memento souvenir. <laughs> Interesting. God, I'm so glad I asked this question. I know. Yeah. I've learned so much <laughs> yeah. in the last five minutes. So it is in my bathroom. Awesome. <laughs> The, the memento. Holding down tissues. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's even better than the drawer. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, we Speaking of your Wikipedia, I saw on your Wikipedia that in 2000, you released a collection of short stories um, titled How It Was For Me. And I didn't know that you wrote short stories because um, I've only read your novels. And I'm curious. It is, I hate to say this to everyone, but it has been 23 years since the year 2000. Yeah. I can't. And I'm curious, <laughs> are you going to jump back into short stories at any point? Ah, I, I think I'm not made for the form mm. because I think it's like a, some, it feels to me like a, a shotgun wedding or something like, <laughs> cause I want to make it as perfect yeah. and as about everything as a novel. And so it takes forever for me to like get the engines going to build the world sure. and then 15 pages later it's over. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. And then my mind is still there. So I don't think I'm particularly made for it. That said, I actually published a short story like. Um, um, through a large book distributor. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's, that was like sort of queer sci-fi. So oh, awesome. that, that was a nice way to like release like a different, yeah, yeah. Um, or to flex a different muscle. So I think maybe I'll do that kind of thing. I love it. Yeah. I'm also currently finishing, I think, was it 2022 that you um, that you edited the Best Short Stories collection? Yeah. That is a phenomenal collection. <laughs> they were astounding. How does the editing for that work? I, do you just get to choose from <laughs> whatever they, you want? I mean, or <laughs> You imagine they do a lot of the work. And okay. the editor, Heidi Pitlor, is fantastic. And they they have a lot of other people who, who read through everything because they're trying to get the, the small presses and online publishing. And yep. they, I mean, the rule is like no more than four New Yorker pieces, I see. which is very reasonable, but kind of hard. Yeah. Um, and, but for me, it was easy because I was just like, I, I really like a story where something happens, like where there's a diamond heist or like a ghost or so like all yep. of them, if it sounded different or was hilarious or in some way, just I thought was fun to read, I put yep. it in. 
Uh, it's I recommend this collection to everyone. It is it's unputdownable for me. <laughs> oh, good. Well, that's what I mean. Right I, on the strip. Good. <laughs> Um, okay, this is kind of our our last serious question, and then we have some silly ones for you. Um, is there anything that you're able to share with us and our listeners about what may be coming next? Well, sure. I'm writing. I'm not writing an Arthur Last book. Okay. My agent did say, Andrew, don't write another one of these less novels. It's all <laughs> you'll ever you do. Andrew, you know, yes. you meant it's business. Serious. She, does, she does do that. <laughs> um, uh, but, but it's not. I Because I've been living in Italy for so long, I my material right now is being an American in Italy, which is a very cliche topic, but uh, my circumstances were specific enough that I, I think there's, there was comedy there. Yeah. And I'm setting it, a lot of writers are doing this. I'm setting it in the late nineties. So there's not really like cell phones because mm. oh. that ruins everything in a novel. It's like, why didn't you just call her? <laughs> you know, so that's what true. everyone says about Seinfeld. Yeah. They're like, every episode of Seinfeld would have been not a thing right. if they had phones. Why are they lost? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why didn't he know the plane's gate had changed? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> didn't he get a push alert? <laughs> um, so our next segment, we end every episode with lightning round questions where we ask kind of, silly faster questions that aren't even necessarily about um your writing perhaps um so karen has the first one um and she's been dying to ask you this so. this is very important to me um i lived in san francisco for many years and i would like to know what is your favorite burrito in san francisco um it's um my favorite is la taqueria but my yes but el castellito has one right near my house and that's when okay. i have the most that's very fair yeah we discussed this beforehand, and I said, Craig, I know you're not from San Francisco, but the correct answer is La Taqueria. It's La Taqueria, absolutely. <laughs> if he doesn't say La Taqueria, he's wrong. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if I went to Milan right now and I only had 24 hours, what should I do? You should definitely see the Brera collection, um, uh, the art museum. Um, I still haven't seen The Last Supper. You should have, like, if you eat meat, you should have also buco if it's a fall or winter or early spring month in one of the old trattorias. Um, and you should go by the canals and watch all the young people, like, drinking beer because it feels like Amsterdam. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so our last fun question for you. This is uh, Instagram story time in which we go through the archives of your Instagram and oh, choose a photo. <laughs> Everyone says that. That we would like you to say more about. <laughs> Happily. <laughs> so, so Craig chose, chose your story time. <laughs> so I found this question, um, or not question. Um, I found this Instagram post. I went back 38 weeks um, and I found... <laughs> you have Sorry. other things to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for listeners... <laughs> Andy's eyes just got gigantic <laughs> in 38 weeks. Um, no, it's it's a very lovely image. Um, so we saw this image where less was an answer on Jeopardy. And I have so many questions, as you can see from my script that I've showed you now. Um, and I'm wondering, did you know? I take it that if you didn't know about the Pulitzer, you probably didn't know about this in advance. And I'm curious, did you just happen to catch it? Were you just watching Jeopardy? And did you spit your drink out? Like, I wish I wish I could say that, that I was watching Jeopardy. But my dad was watching Jeopardy, That's I better, think. I think. Yeah. yeah. And he's the, he's the one who told me. He's very up on those things. He'll let me know if I'm in a crossword puzzle. Oh, yeah. Which I, now and then, yep. I show up. But the last crossword puzzle I thought was hilarious because it was what category do authors Andrew Sean Greer and Jeanette Winterson belong in? And the answer was LGBTQ. And I'm like, is that really the answer? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Questions for Will Shorts about that. Yeah, but uh, but as you point out, as I pointed out, the the no one knew the answer to the oh, Jeopardy. I, I, oh, really? No one got it. No I think the one. caption says, "Reader, she flubbed it." <laughs> <laughs> so. Famous, but not really at all. We, we would have gone. <laughs> yeah, we would have gone. <laughs> um, our very last question for you, Andy. Um, we're curious what you're currently reading or listening to and enjoying. And, if, you know, if you have any book recommendations for, for us and our listeners. I have some old book recommendations, which is Nancy Mitford novels, which okay. are like 100 years old and charming. And I recently listened to Wind in the Willows again, which was oh. also charming. <laughs> Those aren't very modern answers. But I'm reading one of my favorite writers is Patrick DeWitt. He wrote a book called The Sisters Brothers, which was like yes. a great Western. And he, I'm reading his new book. I just love everything he writes. They're all kookily different. So it's <laughs> awesome. like reading different writers. Thank you so much. I will. We, we always add to our TBR very instantly after we talk to someone. So I'll be adding those to my list. <laughs> great. And that is it. We did it. 
We did, we did the Thank podcast. Thank you so much for coming. You guys, they were all silly questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Thank take that as a compliment. <laughs> silly answers. That would be <laughs> typical of me. Thank you for, for playing uh, along. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I'm sure you have a million things to do here at the Texas Book Festival. Well, I have, I have my mom to meet up with. Oh, she got the invite even after that that snub at the Pulitzer dinner. <laughs> well, she happens to be here. I see, I see. <laughs> also, she's fun. I took her to the, the gala two nights ago mm. just because she's. I think she's funny to bring along. <laughs> this is a black tie event, which is not her kind of thing. <laughs> she's like a lesbian from California. So it's awesome. funny to watch her put on makeup. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time again. Thank we really you. appreciate it. It's great to meet you both. Thank you for you having too. me on here. Well, everyone, we hope you enjoyed that interview um, and are excited for tomorrow's day three or four, depending on how you look at it, of the podcast <laughs> extravaganza. Um, we will talk a little bit about who our guest is for tomorrow. But first, Karen, I would love to know what you are reading right now and I hope loving. Oh, I just finished a book that I really enjoyed. It is called The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. Um, a delightful romp of a book. Um, it is about a woman who uh, is embroiled in a competition that revolves around an unreleased book by the world's most famous children's author. Um, she goes to this very kind of exotic, bizarre estate with another interesting cast of characters, and it's just a great adventure. Um, it's got some fantastical elements um, that are implied, and it's a it's very heartwarming, I would say. So highly recommend. Into it. Into it. I've seen that around on the shelves. <laughs> what are you reading and enjoying? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Um, I am reading Funny Story by Emily Henry, who you may have heard of. Oh, yes. This is a big one right now. Yes. Everyone is excited about this book. I was just reading the description on the Libro app. And I think it's very fun. A shimmering, joyful new novel about a pair of opposites with the wrong thing in common, which I think is oh, a very fun way to explain it. That's a very intriguing little yeah. teaser. <laughs> the gist is that there is two couples. And this couple, for, for people that can't see me right now, I'm holding up two fingers, are engaged. <laughs> and the other couple is the this guy in the engaged couples like childhood best friend who he definitely doesn't have feelings for but then he leaves his fiance for his childhood friend and then for whatever reason the two slighted people in these two different couples then move in together because they oh. just need a roommate it's very weird um hence how did you meet it's a funny story um yes it's fun it takes place in michigan um, oh so, yes <laughs> um i'm learning so much about michigan um it's fun if you like emily henry there's no way you won't like this book like it's quirky and sassy and sexy and all the things you like in an emily henry book so pick it up awesome thank you for the recommendation yes all right so everyone the the lead that we buried at the beginning of this outro <laughs> we will be interviewing dr darcy little badger the author of a and a soon-to-be-released sequel to that book, which we will tell you all about in tomorrow's episode. So I highly recommend tuning in. Yes, it was so fun to watch you during this interview. You, it was like you were meeting like your top A-list celebrity. You were so excited. Oh my it was gosh. so fun. I was meeting my top A-list celebrity. <laughs> yes. I love Darcy and I love... Uh, Darcy's books are just some of my favorites. So this was a joyful moment. <laughs> yes, and Darcy was so lovely. We also recorded this one in person. And um, I brought my my child's book with me to be signed. And Darcy drew a little picture in it. Like, so gracious, so lovely. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, loved this interview. So um, look for that whenever our next episode drops, which, oh, right, is tomorrow. Because it's tomorrow. <laughs> podcast a day. So. Yes. Well, thanks for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow. And as always, thanks for listening. Independent bookstore day extravaganza with Craig and Karen supporting. Local